All right, hey there, Small Town America. You know, as we are continue our Heritage Series, uh, we're here in Springtown, Texas at the Western Star Cowboy Church uh, Arena for the Western Cross Ranch Charity Play Day event, an uh, event that's bringing families in the community together uh, to practice our, our Western heritage. It's just a day of fun, uh, horsemanship. Uh, but one of the other things that we'll be looking at today is the American Mustang, the American horse uh, that has a deep, rich uh, history in our heritage. Uh, so we'll be able to visit with them today, uh, hear some of the training that goes on, and what makes this wild Mustang a great animal to help our veterans with horse therapy. We're going to be visiting with Del Long. Uh, and some of some of his staff today we're going to be watching what's going on at the event and so we hope you'll stay tuned to our heritage series small town america let's get in the truck Town America. I'm here with Dale Long. Dale, it's been months of planning. Today's the big day. Months of planning. Absolutely. Yep. So, how does it feel to see all these kids showing up? You're seeing all the horses coming around. You know, we have so many blessings today between, you know, for example, this is Mary Kitzmiller to my right. She's on Remington. Uh, he's the current ambassador for Mustangs all over the U.S. And, of course, we're on Heritage. He's the previous ambassador. Um, so, we're just blessed to be here in the beautiful day God's given us. We have all these people showed up to support Western Cross and its mission. It's all about the ve veterans, their families, children, and really anybody that could use equine assisted learning is what we're about. And we, uh, we're just, you know, we're grateful that you showed up too, Zach, and you're here to, you know, promote what we do for, you know, for America. I mean, we're all about God, country, and family here, so. Right, Dale, and you know, uh, a lot of our mission is protecting our history and preserving our heritage, and what a great day to see these young kids coming to, to do their horse, horseman skills, their horsemanship, but they're also giving back to the veterans that protect our freedoms and allow us to do that. You know, as we say, we, we're serving those that have served us and we're sacrificing time for those that have sacrificed their lives. So that's what it's about, showing them their support. It's about the, the cowboy way of life, the, the American heritage that we grew up on. I mean, we're on these horses for a reason. They got us through and built the nation. And so we're honoring so many things here today between the children, the horses, the veterans, the families, and just America as a whole. Right. All right, Small Town America, we're going to be covering this all day long. We're going to be watching the kids. We're going to also be talking with Mary and, and, the, and what they're doing with the American Mustang. Stay tuned.
right. Hey, Small Town America. We are here at the American Mustang trailer. We did the virtual tour. Now we're sitting here with both the ambassadors for the Mustang. We have Dale Long, Western Cross Ranch. Yeah, thanks thank right so there. much. Appreciate you. Oh, man. not a problem. And you're sitting on Heritage, who was the face. I know he's a little upset now. Yeah. That he's like, wait, under that one. But tell us how important it is to bring the Mustang into your program because you're working with the vets. And so what this event, this event today is all about is working with our vets and, and doing that. But it's kind of unique to take a horse out of the wild and, and put a vet on it. So how, do, how does that work? Well, the first thing you got to realize about uh, Mustangs are they are the PTS versions of horses in, in society today. You think about, uh, you know, why a vet has PTS is because we take a vet out of its unit in the military. Right. That's what it's all about. Right. They're so the, the com camaraderie, the, the closeness, the, the trust and all those things that they learn with their unit. And then so when a vet is pulled out of that environment, they lose that infrastructure. They lose that support group. They lose that. I've got your six mentality. And now they're in the world that doesn't speak their language. Right. Right. So now let's equate that into a Mustang. So we have these wild animals, these Mustangs, feral horses, however you want to call it. People call them different things, but we call them wild Mustangs. Have these Mustangs running wild on the BLM land. Some of them are six, seven, eight years old when they're when they're captured. So they've been they've been free running running wild. All of a sudden, we put them in this traumatic way that we have to capture these animals. They're driven into these chutes. Then they're separated from their herds. Then they're put in under training. A lot of times they're going to these challenges where it's a hundred days. These horses go from being wild to being able to do sit on them and and, and make them do you know events and stuff within a hundred days. Well, that's a lot of stress being put on those right, horses, right, right. right? And they're carrying the baggage from whatever they were surviving on the BLM land. So now you've got two survivors. You've got the military survivor and you've got a horse survivor. And so there's a respect they're automatically given by the two of them knowing we both have damage. Right. And right. so when you bring them into the world, the must who, what better way to show a mirror of your emotions than a Mustang? Right. And, yeah. and one of the things, and I, I know we're doing this this day, and we talk about our heritage, so it's great seeing the kids coming out and yeah, showing their skills and, and doing that. But, you know, one of the things that I found is that with the Mustang coming from the wild, they understand that, that emotion or that feeling of the person that's with them. Yeah. So it's almost like whenever they get around that veteran or if they're around a kid, you see that spirit they change. change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's amazing watching them with kids like, I'll have some that are kind of mouthy or some kind of they're kind of pushy or something like that. You take that uh, a little the little six year old girl that came out and said hi, Dale. They all love uh, heritage in my program. He's one of the faves. But uh, they all come up, and no matter how the horse is with me or or you or anybody else, they change when a child gets in them. They right. they have this they have this protective nurturing something. It's it's protective instinct, and you'll watch them do something with a child or a veteran that they feel like is really hurting and you'll see a horse that may with me act one way but get a damaged vet or a spouse or a child of a and you watch the magic happen and it, that's the only best way i can describe it Zach. right it's, it's actually magic. magical mm -hmm. the, the interaction between the horse the mustangs and 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 our program participants and, and volunteers right. well how can people help you because i know that this this is not cheap feeding a horse every mm -hmm. day so how can they help you? How can they get involved in Western Cross? You know, we're, we're, we're getting, this is our first year. So we're one year old now. We, we did, we're fixing to have our first year birthday. I never thought I'd be as far as I do. I don't think I'm far enough. People tell me, oh, I can't believe how far you are. Um, I mean, here I am sitting here with Mary Kitzmiller on her ambassador. Mm -hmm. And a year ago, I didn't even know there was such a thing, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's been an amazing transition into the world, but but what we need is support. We need support on, I tell people, there's three ways to support Western Cross mission. One, man, we always need money. I, I'm, I'm so, I, I hate saying that because people get burned by so many programs out there and say, oh, we need your money, we need your money. I tell people all the time, every dollar that comes in to my program, and I mean this, every dollar that comes into my program goes to the program. I don't take a penny. I don't have anybody on salary. Nobody gets paid here, okay, except for the horses because they get food, and to them, that's pay, okay? But nobody gets paid in my group, okay? Um, so money is always necessary. We could use sponsors. You know, you want to sponsor a horse for a year? I can tell you. 
Man, it takes me about, on average, per horse, about $400 a month, you know, per horse on average, between feed, board, That's care, right. and everything I got to do. So you want to sponsor a horse? Pick one of my horses out. Ask him for a picture. Man, we'll send you a picture every day if you want of them. You send me, get you donate, you know, $500 a month, once, one time or for a year, whatever you want to do. Get together as your church group, whatever you got. Come together, put your pennies together, and tell me, hey, we want to sponsor Heritage. By the way, I got nine horses, folks. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can you can say, hey, send us pictures of your horses. That's one way. You can just send us money through the website. We got a donate button. It all goes to there. Another way we need support, obviously, other than just financial, is we need participants. You know, if you know somebody that's hurting, send them to me. It doesn't cost you a dollar. We don't charge our participants anything. There are places out there I know that charge fifty or hundred dollars or whatever they charge for you to participate in their program. At Western Cross, it costs you nothing, but take a chance on us and let us show you what the magic of it is. Um, and then the third way is volunteers. We got to have volunteers. I can't do it all myself. Thank right. gosh for my volunteers. Lots because of red shirts them. running around. Today. Yeah, it's I mean, awesome. you know, you see all the red shirts. Those are my guys and gals that, are, that they give their time. They don't. They don't expect anything. And when I say they're not. The other thing is, y'all know, this is not a riding program. So they don't come out to just sit on horses all day long and say, oh, I'm sitting on a Mustang. No, 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 folks. It starts in the morning when we start mucking stalls and cleaning and washing and moving and haying and stacking and whatever's got to be done. They're sweating or they're freezing if it's wintertime. Right, right. But these are people that are getting in there and getting it done. And we're not talking about, you know, the, the, the perfect specimen of a, of a guy throwing a, a 50 or 75 pound bale of hay. We're talking about kids as young as six years old coming out there and helping us. We're talking about seniors out there that are in there almost 70 years old coming out and helping us. So it takes a family um, and everything that we get at, at Western Cross Ranch is put to use. Right. And we appreciate no matter what it is, there is nothing too small and, and we appreciate every bit of it. And so I tell all this too, this is not the Dale Long Show. I don't care if my name's anywhere on the deal, except for somebody had to do it. And so God asked me and I said, yes and amen. Yeah. And, uh, and and I kind of challenged him at first. And he said, well, if not you, who? And how can you expect others to do it if you won't do it? And so here I am sitting on this beautiful horse next to a wonderful lady that, that probably got more horse knowledge than I could put in this hat. And uh, and just grateful to be here. Awesome. And they can find you, Western, what's the website? It is westerncrossranch.org the best way to find it because there is a western across arabian out there so you have to go www.westerncrossranch.org or you can see us on facebook under dale long and it links you to western cross or you can call me or i mean i answer my cell phone whether you all know this or not but the number that's on all of our brochures and stuff that goes to me i answer every call because if I got a veteran in crisis, I want to talk to them. If I got somebody that has questions, I want to tell them the answer. If I got somebody that has a need, I want to be able to provide the solution. Right. So. Dale, appreciate everything hey, that you're doing. No, I Support appreciate you. you. Guys, get in the truck.
Hey there, Small Town America. You know, we we're talking about our Heritage Series, and I am with Ann, who is in charge of the American Mustang virtual trailer, and they get to tour all over the United States explaining our heritage and, and the wild horses. Ann, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the trailer? Absolutely. We have a 45-foot virtual reality trailer here, which you actually get to step into the day of a wild horse. Now, it doesn't get any better than that. And we take you on a tour, we show you the land and, that they come from, we show you horses on range, which means in the wild. We also show you horses that are off range, that have already been gathered waiting to be adopted. And that's where you come into play, because we're going to educate you today about America's Mustang and just how you can get one and be a part of our American history. So doesn't get better than that. I know. And you know, Ann, one of the things that we talk about in our Heritage Series is passing that torch down to the yes. next generation. And there's something I think we've forgotten about our, our heritage of the wild Mustang yes. and how essential it is in the making of America. And, and so that's the importance. I, I know like we have Dale today who has uh, the face of the American yes. horse here for the past 10 years. We have the current reigning yes. face with Remington and we're going to yes. be featuring them today. But how important is it passing that heritage and that oh. knowledge down so that, to the next generation so that they understand where, where the American Mustang comes from? Well, it's very important. And What's exciting about that is these kids and these youth soak up these wild Mustangs. I mean, if you go to any of our websites or our Facebook pages or Instagram and type in the Mustang Heritage Foundation Youth Program, even YouTube, you will see amazing things that our youth, who are our rock stars, do. Um, you can take a wild horse at the age of eight all the way to 17 and enter in our youth programs. And I, I'm telling you, I'm blessed to get to see people's lives changed because of a wild horse. I mean, does it get better than that? Yeah, I, and and it, did, it just didn't start with us. That started way back when the Spaniards brought them over. We get to continue that and to educate Americans, and that's what we're going to do for you today. We're going to walk you through the trailer and let you live a day in the life of a wild Mustang, and hopefully you'll want to learn more and maybe go to one of those adoption centers and adopt a wild horse. Awesome. Small Town America, let's go take a look at the trailer. Good morning. Welcome to the America's Mustang Experience. You get to walk a day in the life of a wild Mustang. First, I want to show you all the wrap on the trailer. This is actually wrap from Nevada out at Antelope Valley, which Antelope Valley is one of our most needy areas. Um, that HMA, which stands for Herd Management Area, is 512% overpopulated with Mustangs. So I like to tell people that come in the trailer, if you have a fenced-in backyard in town, you take five horses and you put in your yard and you just leave them. You don't feed them, you don't water them, you just leave them in that fenced yard. That's a little bit what it's like for wild horses out there. Because as you can see, there's not much vegetation. This is all sagebrush, which is actually really not edible, nutritionally wise anyway. So we're gonna educate you a little bit. Our first video we have today is about the lands they come from. And this is actually the meat and potatoes of what Mustang Heritage is here for. We're here to educate you that if wild horses lived in Kentucky or Tennessee, probably the only problem we'd have is they'd all be overweight. But they don't. They live on desert land in the west where they're protected. So um, this video tells you a little bit about the lands they come from, the vegetation and the water and lack of, and actually is really all about what we do because most people have no idea of the need it is for wild horses. So as you walk on through the trailer, we have all kinds of information that you can read and find out a little bit about more about the horses. And then our next video is about horses on range. And these are horses in Utah, out at um, Anakee, and this is horses that are out on the range already, that have not been gathered. and. There's about probably around 83,000 right now out there because last year we had some pretty good gathers. And the Bureau of Land Management, Wild Horse and Burrow Division, manage these horses and try to do appropriate management to where they don't get too bad overpopulated and they can sustain themselves in the wild. So they kind of watch and take care of the horses. Now, as you can see, the vegetation is poor and there's not much. That's why they do gathers, so they can gather them up to help, help for their safety. 
When you come on through the trailer, we have some more information. This shows you the 10 states that the horses are protected. They're protected of the Act of 1971, the Wild Horse Annie put in effect with the government, and they're on government land, all protected on these lands. And if you know anything about these 10 states, you know that their vegetation and water is lacking in many of them. So that's why they need to be gathered, because wild horses have the possibility of doubling in size every four to five years. So this tells you a little bit about the horses. And uh, they're on 26.9 million acres in the west. And we have 177 HMAs, herd management areas, where they are protected. So when they are brought in from the government, the helicopter rounds them up. And we have very knowledgeable, educational men that help, that know how to do this safely. And the BLM puts fencing out that protects them as they come in. And this is the fencing. So in some of the videos here, you'll see this fencing out as they're gathered. But if a horse runs into this, it really, they don't get really hurt or anything. And so this is what's safe for them. And then this is our last video we have inside. This helps educate you about horses that are offering and in the wild. And as you can see, here's a helicopter bringing them in. Here's the fencing that the BLM has put up. And this helps show you horses that are gathered and in corrals waiting to be adopted by you and me. So um, we have some more pictures here that tells you a little bit about horses. And if you want to know a little bit about uh, how to adopt a horse, you can contact Mustang Heritage Foundation. You can talk, contact me. I'm Ann Souders. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I would be glad to help you. You can go to mustangheritagefoundation.org and find out all the information, how to get a hold of us. And we would love you to come to one of our events. We have an event the end of June in Tennessee, at Franklin, Tennessee, one of our extreme Mustang makeovers. And we have tip events all across the nation all summer. And those are all listed on our Facebook page, our um, Instagram page, and on the internet, on our website. So we are so glad you got to take a tour with us today. And when it comes to Mustangs, I will tell you, I tell people all the time, you might have to wear an allergy mask because they're very contagious. So once you learn about it, you want to learn more and more. And uh, we're so glad you got to be here with us today and learn a little bit about America's wild horses. All right. Hey there, Small Town America. Part of our Heritage Series is, is talking about the American Mustang. And here we are with Mary Kay, trainer and handler for the new ambassador. Here's the old ambassador. You have the new ambassador. An amazing story with that that Ann was telling me. She actually has documentation from Remy when he was just a colt being captured in the wild and now ended up in your hands. And one of the things is this unique brand that you'll see on the Mustangs. What's, what's about that brand that lets us know this is a Mustang while it comes from the wild? So these Mustangs um, that are gathered up by the BLM Bureau of Land Management, they are, are all freeze branded up on their neck here when they're processed. And that's a way to kind of um, keep track of the horse. It's got, the brand contains information about the horse. So it looks like just a series of random hash marks, but you can actually look up online. You can look up a uh, BLM signalment key and it'll show you that each one of these little marks corresponds with a number. And you can use that number to give you information about the horse. Uh, so this first symbol is like a U.S. government symbol. Mm -hmm. The second two that are stacked on top of each other are uh, the year the horse was born. So in his case, it stands for a one and a five. So he's eight years old. He was born in 2015. And then this series of numbers that is above this uh, underline is uh, like a serial number. So if I just found him, I adopted him, and I didn't have any history on him, I could look up this serial number, and it'll tell me, where in the country he was living and where he was gathered. Where it came from. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's so many of these horses across the western United States. They're in California, Nevada, Oregon, Wyoming, where Remy is from. Uh, so it's a really cool way to kind of keep in, keep track of the horse and, and learn more about their history. Right, right. And, and I know just kind of in the, in the last couple of years, because of the, the Mustang makeover, the Mustang has really kind of taken on that American symbol again. 
and we've always thought about that's the wild horse and it's but now to see what you professional trainers are doing with these horses and, and so what's the time period if, if you adopt this horse how much time do you have to actually compete in, in the mustang makeover so if you get a, a mustang makeover horse the time limit varies anywhere from as little as 90 days to as many as 120 days so three or four months and that horse comes to you totally wild. They've never been, um, you know, haltered or led around. Any kind of processing that's been done with the horse as far as medical care has all been done in a chute like they would do with, with cattle. Right. Um, so these horses come to you a clean slate, totally wild, and you have, you know, three or four months to gentle that horse, teach it to lead, teach it to ride. And that all culminates in the, um, the makeover where we all, you know, show up to compete against right. each other right and then you are you, if you watch some of these videos that y'all have going i mean these are doing full competitions we're watching the kids just doing doing flags and poles today but i mean y'all are like climbing in cars and climbing in trucks and taking them over obstacles i mean the these wild animals in less than 90 days have adapted to to your training yeah and it really goes to show you what great animals that they are, that they can do that. They have their whole world turned upside down when they're gathered and this is a new reality and so many of them take to it just incredibly well. And that's the whole point of the makeovers is it, the show is fun and entertaining and it's a blast to compete in, but the real purpose behind all of it is to get these horses in homes because when these horses are gathered, they're all sitting in corrals across the country and looking for people to come take them and make them a good horse. And so the makeovers really, you know, we hope to show the general public, this is an amazing horse and you can do anything you can do with a domestic right. horse. Right. Well, just like Dale here, who's got the, the old ambassador and he's one of the top horses for, for his training program with, with the vets. You know, it's, it's almost like we as humans look to love and be loved. They are the same way. And so when they get, when they have somebody that they're dealing with, whether it's a kid, a child, somebody with special needs, they kind of realize that love and they want that love in return. And it's a great bonding situation. It really is. These horses can fiercely bond with their people. And, um, you know, all they're looking for as a prey animal, they're looking for a safe place. They're looking for safety and comfort. And it, you as a handler, if you can show the horse, hey, it's a good deal to be with me. I'm going to take care of you. I'm not going to let you get hurt. They'll give you their whole heart. Right, right. And so you're now the handler. You, you've got the, fa fa the face of, must, of American Mustang. Uh, you're doing clinics. You're doing clinics. Where, where, can, where can we go to find you? Or if somebody wants to have Remy come out, what, 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 can, what, what can we do? You can find me both on Facebook if you search for Mary Kitzmiller Horsemanship. Okay. And you can also find me online at marykitzmiller.com. And I've got all my contact information on both of those that you can. All right. And then final deal, because Small Town America is about uh, uh, protecting our history, preserving our heritage. Just want to let you know, you come from a generation of cowboys. I do. I do. My uh, my grandpa was a cowboy up in South Dakota and Wyoming area, and um, he actually started horses for the U.S. Cavalry back in the day, uh, the last year that the U.S. had a cavalry, right. um, and probably started Mustangs. Um, rodeo cowboy, his whole family, that whole side of the family, um, you know, are ranchers up in that part of the country. Right. So, uh, so is it family passing the torch down generation after generation or, or did you just something that says, I, I have this in my bloodstream? Uh, a little bit of both. I was one of the only uh, grandchildren to actually carry on his legacy of, um, of you know, riding horses and, and being in that industry. Um, I always joke that, and my mom got me my first horse, and I always joke that my first horse was really her first horse. Um, so we've been uh, we've been doing horses together for many, many years now. And uh, yep, I'm very proud to carry it on. Well, thank you for all that you do, protecting our horses, preserving our horses, and preserving our heritage. Thank you so much. Guys, get in the truck, stay tuned.
30 seconds.